The Green Room welcomes award-winning actor, writer, director, and producer Mark Brombacker. Leaving his successful career to pursue acting has had its ups and downs, but Mark's pursuits have proven that he's built for the creative. The Green Room welcomes Mark Brombacker. Yay! We finally got Mark in the Green Room. Welcome, Mark. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, yeah, man, it's great. I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today, man. You are, you are, you're amazing. You're a personal friend, but I also admire your work, your enthusiasm, your ingenuity. We'll get into all of that. But again, welcome to the green room. How's your day? It's good. I'm, uh, you know, like, like all of us, uh, we're all going through something and, uh, I just remember to be grateful every single day. So I feel I feel particularly grateful today is the the one the one word I would use for everything. There's a, there's just so much I have to be grateful for, you know, in spite of all the troubles we're all going through right now. So that's great. That that is a wonderful perspective to have. And when we remain grateful, it opens the doors, you know, for other things to come to us. So before we get right into it, let's go ahead and put up your social media. If you want to follow Mark, you can follow him right here on social media. Brom Actor. There you go. Follow him there. He's a great person to follow, to know. He's insightful, witty. He's also challenging. He's political when he needs to be, spiritual when he needs to be. He's an all-around great guy. We're so glad. Oh, to have thank you. Here. Wow. <laughs> so before we talk about who Mark is now, let's jump right into it. What are your early beginnings? Tell me about Mark, how he started. And then if you want to, let's transition into where your passion for acting came. Tell us about that. Well, I'm a small town guy from Sault Ste. Marie, Northern Ontario. Uh, I grew up there. Uh, my parents are German immigrants. Um, I'd say, you know, um, uh, growing up, you know, my brother and I, we we loved to, we loved humor, we loved art, music, but we really loved, you know, laughing and making our dad laugh because, you know, he was he. We could make him laugh, and that was a big challenge and a great source of pride for both of us. And we, you know, uh, I, I remember from a very early age, actually, you know, watching uh, my favorite shows were like the Three Stooges and um, and uh, uh, Three's Company. Actually, I really liked the physical comedy of uh, of John Ritter and stuff like that. So I just remember just almost studying those shows, learning the lines, learning the mannerisms of physical comedy and trying to make people laugh in the same way when I went to school and that type of thing. So thinking back, that was sort of the, the early genesis of, of me being an actor, but not realizing that I actually wanted to follow this as a career. I just sort of, it was sort of something I brought into everyday life for me. So. That's interesting. So, so you've been built or I don't, I don't want to say engineered, but you have been, your early beginnings are to, to create stories, scenarios, to create an environment whereby people can be informed and entertained. Um, that's just a part of, of what you, yeah. you raise. Yeah. I think, you know, I thought this was just how everybody was, but there, there was something about me that was really geared towards storytelling, you know, just, if something happened, I was always the best at telling the story. It was like I could sort of, I could remember it in a way where I would hit the important beats. So when I tell it to someone else, that was the way to tell it. And everyone started remembering it the way I told it. It's like this is like, oh yeah, Mark tells it the best. So I just sort of had those those instincts uh, of retelling cool stuff that happened to me. And then I also liked in uh inventing stories and uh you know sometimes making up stories that happen to me which i learned later was not advised because that's called lying and then people <laughs> think you're you know they think you're a liar and a bad person but i just really wanted to tell a story and i wanted the emotional reaction so <sighs> then you know the, i had to, i found out later that writing is an honorable way to to tell yeah. lie and fabricate and you get applause for it instead of uh, people hating you so yeah. So, so, so who, who told you, who told you that you had this gift? Because again, as the intro said, you were, you were, you, you pursued 
or you had a successful career and if you want to share what you did before mm -hmm. you began pursuing acting you can talk about that but but who told you where did you get that inspiration that you can do this professionally there was something in you other than just making your dad laugh entertaining your family but that you can entertain audiences because there has to be a level of confidence that is put in you that to say hey not only am i an actor but I'm also a writer. I don't just tell stories through movement, but I have the power of the pen. I have the power of the keyboard to sit down and evoke emotions and tell a story and create an environment whereby people can understand a transition from one place to the other. There's a confidence that had to come in. Where did that come from? It's, um, yeah, it's a very, very well said. And it, there's so much to unpack there because, you know, I believe, you know, I, I believe we have a, a God-given gift in arts, but like anything else, you, you have to sharpen your tool. You need to continually work on it, work on it as a craft. There's the gift and then there's the craft side of it. Um, when I was young, uh, you know, I, I had this, this storytelling, you know, this way that I just sort of naturally told stories and tried to entertain people. And then in grade four, I remember there was a school play and I went to audition because why not? And I wanted to play the role of a pirate in uh, Treasure <laughs> Island. And so I gave the best audition. I was like, I was like, and I was like, oh, like just fantastic. And um, everyone else was pretty mediocre. And I didn't get the role of the pirate. They were just casting everything as they went. And then I kept mm -hmm. auditioning for different roles, different roles. And they're like, and I didn't get any of them. And then it's like, then the, the lead role was coming up and I was like, screw it. I'm not even going to try out. And then the director's like, Mark, do you want to try out for the lead role of Jim? And I'm like, no, I was like, come on, just try out. So I tried out for it. And of course they gave me the lead and it was, it, it was there. I, then the director talked to me and said that, you know, I was, I was picked for that. And, uh, you know, it was a great honor. I had to basically carry the show. And, uh, and <laughs> I didn't think too much about it, but then like the entire, like I was, I was always very introverted and kind of a quiet kid in many ways. And then the entire mm. school saw it. And then my parents saw it and they, like my parents, they just saw me in a whole new light. They like, they had no idea that I was, you know, like this. So it, it was, yeah, it was, I would say that director whose name escapes me right now, but, uh, wow. uh yeah, the, um, the, she was the first one to really, really sort of say that there's more to you and you should pursue this. And I, Oddly, I didn't pursue it again until high school. It was like, oh, acting was a lot of fun. And my parents were like, hey, would you like us to send you acting classes? And I was like, no, I just want to be a kid a little bit longer. Yeah. But uh, then, in, then in high school, I, I actually really found the desire to, uh, to, to pursue it. So That's great. So you started out as a leading man. <laughs> Ah, you started yeah. out. The rest of my kid. life is chasing that, trying to find that again. <laughs> that high, trying to get back to that high. I know, that's I know. That's great. So then high school, you actually pursued it. That's that's really, really good. Now, you talked about a, a God-given a God given purpose. What are your thoughts? What are your values in terms of, of when I look at, see, what I, this is my personal, my personal take. And, and tell me what, how you feel about that in terms of God-given. I feel that we are gifts, gifted. So that means our gifts are there. We have a passion, we have a skill set, we have dreams, and we have a destiny. And I feel like whenever all of those things line up, so in other words, that which you should be doing, you have a gift to do, you work on the skill to perfect it, it becomes a passion for what you want to do, what you're driven to do, which ultimately mm -hmm. lines up to your destiny and fulfilling your purpose. So I believe that when you put all of those together and you're able to tap into those things, I think that's when you are now living where you're supposed to be living. What are your thoughts on that? That's uh it's it's a it's complicated. I I battled with that too because I I th I think there's uh you know, you might disagree with this, but sometimes uh I I think there's a little bit of um for for lack of a better term you know like success and achievement porn where, where like they say it's like if you if you believe it you can do it and if it's your passion then that's what you should be doing for a living and i think that's that's ultimately a goal but i find also it a lot of people uh it's diff it's difficult to say because i think you need to take care of yourself and i think a lot of people think that just chasing the passion can uh, can can be everything but it 
I don't know, you, you need a certain level of discipline and yeah, as well to, um, to achieve that. And I, you know, like I, maybe I'm looking at the path that I took because, you know, I, you know, I went to, I took university, uh, theater and university. And then after that, I went a different direction and I, and I, and I studied, um, sorry, I, I taught myself software and I started a software company and I ran that had a very successful career for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I have to say I'm very proud of that, and I and I, I really that's a very vital part of my journey. And then, uh, Absolutely. And then afterwards, I decided to I, maybe I did it backwards. A lot of people they, they focus their on their fact their passion first, but uh, I went the you know the software development route, and then I then I went in this direction. So uh, I don't know. It's it's a really tough question to uh, you know yeah. should should you should you full full force. Um, Cause, cause right now I'm, I'm, I'm going full force after the creative side, mm -hmm. but it, it's a challenge for the creative side to, to completely, you know, support, support everyone financially. I know I, and I, and I like, there's so many wonderful actors and wonderful artists out there. And I don't, and you know, like some people are saying, you know, sometimes you get feedback from people like, well, if you don't make a living from your, your artist, you're not really an artist. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's like, you know, like, so that's that's ultimately where i want to get to um but i also i also enjoy being productive in other entrepreneurial ways in technology Absolutely. so yeah 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 you know it's i don't like people say when i when i'm working on something technology wise or, or you know a side business people say oh that's kind of a compromise to your artistic self and i'm like well you can be creative in that too and that can be fulfilling too and you you can serve in that way as well so uh yeah, it's a it's, it's a long answer. It's a tough one. It's one yeah, that I struggle with is. too. But, uh... It is, and you and you know, Mark, I, I I do agree. I agree with all that you're saying because you know some of my story. You know that my path has not been linear. It has not been streamlined. I didn't wake up and say I want to act. Or the the truth of the matter is, I have several gifts and several passions. There are certain things there, 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 there's a humanity, the humane side of me that I'm very passionate about. And you understand that side. There's a spiritual side there, there, you know, there, there's the creative side. There are other areas that I flow in. So I agree with you. It doesn't, finding your, where you're supposed to be can be, you're supposed to be, you can be more than one place. You don't have to be in one place. Like we just don't have to know Mark as the actor but you have within you something that's in you, other things you can do, the technical side. I admire your, your software, your technical, your creative and ability to code and decode. I admire that. That's something that I attempted to do and I wasn't as successful as you. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know I have a minor in chemistry from a major that I chose before I chose communications. I was, I was going to school to be a doctor. I was capable, but I realized it wasn't a passion. So I agree with you, everything, that that has come together to put us where we are is a part of us and yes we and i think it, i think they feed us. each other and nourish each other like yes. i think i think having you know passions in different areas makes me a better artist and you know being being an artist makes me a better creator on the technical side because you know like even even websites have to be beautiful but uh but having having the um you know being logical and and and, and being productive and that that all feeds you know feeds me into achieving um my goals as an actor you know i i put the same level of discipline into trying trying to be an actor and trying to write a script and trying to craft stories so yeah i think i think they they you know it's it's just a lot more you know like it's like, like i said it's been a long journey but it's a lot more integrated of a journey and uh, absolutely it's, it's wonderful to see you know these things come together and feed each other so mm -hmm. absolutely that's a great well let's stop and take a break and let's look at one yeah. of your clips and when we come back i want you to tell us about this particular clip and let's move into some things let's talk about some acting and um and we'll be right back stay tuned excuse me miss yes I couldn't help but notice that you look really unhappy. Is everything all right? Everything's actually okay. It's just, I was caught up in this book I'm reading. It's just so engrossing. I'm afraid you got a little too wrapped up in the words on the page that you forgot to smile. Oh no, how selfish of me. Here I am, enjoying a book and not giving a single thought to what other people might be thinking of me. Well, it's a good thing that I caught you. And you know what? It's not too late. I bet you could light up this room. 
That's great. <laughs> you should smile. You should smile. Tell us about that work. And then let's move in. Let's talk about Mark, the actor. What's going on here? Well, uh, you should smile was a, it was a concept that I had. Um, and it's something I heard, I've heard a lot from women, but it's also something that I've experienced. I, I'm a German. So sometimes when I'm in deep in thought and I'm walking down the street, I got a very serious face. Right. And sometimes people walk up, it's like, Hey, you should smile. Or like, and, uh, you know, it's like I could actually be beaming with joy and lightness and gratitude on the inside. But on the outside, they see, you know, they, they see the opposite. And I hear women complain mm -hmm. about that a lot. It's like, you know, hey, baby, you should smile. You look a lot prettier, that type of thing. And it's and I decided to write a story about a guy who, you know, who's trying to connect with women and, you know, trying to pick up women or, or you know, just, you know, connect with them emotionally by telling them to smile and expecting them to be gratitude, you know, grateful about it. And he comes off as a bit of a jerk. So this is, it's a, it's a little three minute uh, short film that I did that was his journey. Uh, I wrote it and directed it and ended up being kind of fun. So it was fun to play that character. So That's great. You should smile. That, that's, that's true. I know I have a serious face. Many times I can be, and my oldest, he has that same face like you're describing. We can be at an event or enjoying something, even sometimes at an amusement park. And I'm just, and it's just that I'm just, I'm just in it. I'm, I'm intent. My emotions are there on the inside, but sometimes someone said I have that um, that resting face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the resting uh, gentleman face or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and it's um, you know, and I, it's it, it's you know, it, I, it would irritate me a lot. But you got to remember to have empathy for other people. They they just usually the people just mean well. But uh, yeah, it's annoying that they expect, you know, like, you know, my internal world is wonderful, but I now have to be concerned about other people seeing me. It's like, cause you know, like, cause me just sitting there existing is somehow uh, making other people uncomfortable. And it's, you know, it's a funny thing. It's a humorous thing. And that's sort of, uh, you know, so I wanted to explore that idea in that short film. I know, I know what we're going to talk about acting, but I want to shift gears here, gears here because you said that you wrote this, you directed it, clearly you're acting in it, but mm -hmm. you have the ability to take an occurrence in life or a series of occurrences, find a storyline in it and bring it to life. Tell me how you go through that process of seeing or observing or, or experiencing something and taking that experience taking that and saying, hey, there's a storyline in it. There's a story that someone else can relate to, or there's a message that I feel compelled to share. So I have to get you know, into the pen. I have to pick up the pen or I have to sit at the keyboard. Tell me how, what is your process and where do you find your inspiration when you find a storyline in something like that? Um, it, uh, you know, sometimes I used to just like, before I got into writing and thought that I was a writer, I would just be, uh, you know, I just be walking down the street and I, you know, I would see something that would happen and I saw how a person would react. And then I'd be thinking, it's like, oh, it be, be, would have been really funny if the person said this instead of that. And then I, then I would start carrying that on to its logical conclusion. And then this would happen. And then the ironic finish would be that. And I'm like, wow, that'd be really hilarious. Somebody should write that someday. Then I would just, you know, and I would find myself doing that, you know, four or five times a day. Mm -hmm. not even like and i was already acting at this point and then eventually it occurred to me it's like you know like why should somebody else write this why should not why shouldn't i just write this right, and i think right, right. Do that a lot they think they see or they experience something funny and there's something in their brain that just says says hey what if this happened instead of that ha 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 if that happens to you you're already writing just you don't you don't have a you're not in front of a keyboard so i would i would advise anyone like i think I think we all have storytellers inside of us and mm. uh, it's, it's just about nurturing that and uh, pra getting in practice of trying to, you know, yeah. uh, getting it out onto the page. I know even in some of our um, private conversations, you and I have shared things and I'll say, hey, Mark, that's a storyline. You know, there's a story in that or you you've shared an experience or an occurrence. And likewise, and we both have, we've recognized that there are things we can build on because I think now in some of the stories that we tell, I think people want to see authenticity. There's there's a place for fantasy. There is a place for surrealism in telling the stories. But I think based on where we are with the pandemic, with people losing lives, um, I think about one of the popular um, um, TV series, and I'm not sure if you've seen it, um, This Is Us. 
And um, part of its success is that it talks about life and death and family and relation. And it's something that everyone can relate to. And the way it's cleverly written and the way those words are enveloped, it, it has a way of bringing it out of us to the point where we can relate to something that we see on that screen. Yeah. And I, I won't I won't say that's where the greatest stories are, because, again, I agree there are places for for sci fi. There's places for even for anime and and think fantasy and surrealism and fiction. There's a place for that. But there's also a place for the true story that comes that is birth from a real place, a real place of, of observation. And it doesn't have to be pain all the time. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. And and I even think that. Uh... If you're going to have fantasy and sci-fi, the ones the ones that are best are the ones that connect on that level. Everything everything is a human level that connects with ordinary people and should be universal. I think if you if you preach to a certain audience uh, and alienate another audience, or you try to be if you try to be too smart in your storytelling, you're going to lose people. I think it's it's you know it's um, it's it's trying it's trying to glorify yourself and show off when ultimately you want to do is just make people feel something and i and i think the best audience is to try and make make it so that everyone would feel something like Very good. target everyone is your audience what's universal what's human and yes pain is universal a uh, loss is universal love is universal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know the fear of losing things that this is all you know that's all dramatic and it's all it's all rich for storytelling and it's the story you know like they say shakespeare's you know like uh like it just tells the same story over and over again all stories are the same there's only like five or six stories and even shakespeare just borrowed from them it's because we don't get tired of it it's the universal human story of you know uh, you know being born living and uh you know losing people and all that so yeah i i my advice to other storytellers would Try not to be too smart. Just stick to the basics and uh, put your own spin on it, and you know, and have have fun with the revealing of it and twists and stuff like that. But you know, the human story at the center of it is what really matters. So absolutely, I agree. Well, look, let's take a break. Let's watch another clip of a work that you mounted. I believe you released it in 2020. I believe you shot and released it in 2020. You can correct me. It's called Merry Christmas, Baby. Here's a short clip from that. Let's take a break, continue the conversation. And I want to hear some of the behind the scenes about how you mounted this work, OK? We'll be right back soon. In that, you deserve a guy who can get you those things. And lately, I'm just not that guy. What are you trying to say, Harold? Remember the other night you had your friends over? And Chloe, she wouldn't shut up about her engagement ring. She's such a phony bitch. Yeah, well, I saw something in your eyes that night. I saw a look I'd never seen before, and it broke my heart. I don't know what you're trying to say, Harold. Don't lie to me. Just admit it. When you saw that engagement ring, you knew that it was something that I could never give you. Intriguing. Now, I, I have seen the short and I'm not going to give it away, but um, give us the behind the scenes. Tell us tell us where you birthed this from. Tell us about Merry Christmas, baby. If you want to give us some set, some set details, you know, what, what were your what, did, what hurdles did you have to fight through? How you feel? What is this story saying? Go at it. Let's let's go at it. Merry Christmas, baby. Well, I, I decided to feature, uh, you know, in the stuff that uh, in my clips today, stuff that you know, I produced and acted in for the most part. So, and I, I think all, all the clips of, except for one are, are things that I've written and I've, and I, I act in all of them. Um, this one was, uh, this one was a challenge. I, I, I wanted to find, you know, it was, in the, it was in the middle of the pandemic and I wanted to find a way to be on set and, and to make a short. And um, so I, I challenged myself to write a Christmas type story that I could shoot at one location could get my friends involved in and could shoot you know very inexpensively and i actually sh and one of the other challenges i wanted to shoot this entirely on iphone because there's actually there's a ton of technology available uh you know like sound gear lighting gear uh and editing gear that can allow you to to make a a great film 
just on your on your uh, on your phone. So uh, this was all shot on iPhone, and um, yeah, that's uh, and I w the other note that I want to make is if if you smoke a cigarette in slow motion, you look really really cool. So I just wanted to find <laughs> I, I wanted to find a way to, that I could smoke a cigarette on camera in slow motion and just include that. So I really I love that shot the way it just turned out because and you know and, and I'm saying to the audience out there don't smoke it's not good for you it's a terrible habit I don't want to endorse that at all but you do look really cool doing it sometimes so now I know I know one of the things about you that I admire is that you 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 take these stories that you've written you have the courage to sit down and you have the courage to take it a step further and put it together to find a team sometimes to invest your own money set it up get the right permits and literally go to work and put it together so so every time you go on set mounting something that you have created you're building your experience you're building you're building your your repertoire you know you're building your catalog that you can be proud of and own and you're also learning a lot and you're building your rapport with other actors because i'm sure you I don't know if you use others or if you if you recycle or if you just, you know, each time it's an opportunity to reach out to someone new. I know you and I, we're slated to do some things in the future. And I'm really, really excited yeah. about that. I'm really excited about that. But but, you know, it, it's it's great. It's great that you have the courage to reach out and to do these things as an artist, not just an actor, but an artist. Tell us about some of the awards that you've won. Tell us about some of the some of the recognition that you have garnered in the industry, because I know I mentioned that, you know, you in the in the intro that you are an award um, winning actor, producer, director. Can you mention a few of those things or anything that's in the works? I don't want you to disclose things that you can't, but still. Yeah, but um, like as to what you're saying about being an artist, like the the projects that I've done, I, I treat everything as a learning experience. Like I, you know, and and if it wins an award, that's great. And but I I'm I'm also I'm also not afraid to put something out there that's, you know, not not as great as it can be because at this point I still like when it when it comes to you know, I consider myself a pretty refined actor but when it comes to filmmaking directing producing and editing and all that stuff i'm still learning so these are all things that i just i try to do the best of my ability mm -hmm. but instead of you know instead of going to to film school i'm surrounding myself with great people and making sh you know short films and having a great time doing it and sometimes i win awards so the the, the uh, movie i that's got the most recognition is called the paper boy that i produced uh well, direct co-directed with uh, a great friend Michael James Regan and another great friend who's producer um, Nicole Bailey, whose son uh, Andrew plays the lead role of the Paperboy. That was sort of based on me as a kid. It's a, it's um, I, I just remember when I was I was uh, taking the streetcar one day in 2019, and I was I was just thinking back to the nostalgia of being a Paperboy in the 1980s. Yes, I am that old, mm -hmm. and um, what a magical time it was, and how crazy it is for for a kid to go door to door to all these houses and ask for money and collect money from grownups. And the grownups would be all these deadbeats. And it's like, Oh, I don't want to pay. And so it could get a little bit hostile. And it was like it was a really sk sketchy situation that I don't think kids of today would ever be put in that situation. But you know, it was the wild west back right. then. And I just, I, I thought like, Oh, somebody should write a story about that. And then immediately, as soon as I got home, I started, I started actually, I put together uh uh, an outline for a feature film and I was talking to some people and then I I talked to Nicole and I said we could also do this as a short we could totally cast your son and we totally you know we brought that together so the paper boy was one of them another one family game night which, which you're going to be seeing a, a clip of shortly yes um I won best actor award at uh the um oh no shock stock it's called it's a it's a horror film festival that features films and fe like there's feature films I was competing against too Mm -hmm. uh, in the United States, there are American actors, uh, like in, in Europe. So the nominations for Best Actor were in feature films also in the United States, Europe, uh, and Canada as well. And I won Best Actor, which was, that, to me, that was sort of the, and, and here, here's my trophy, by the way. I always hey! keep my So I'm very proud of that. But uh, yeah, that was a big deal for me. It's, you know, like uh, we are, you know, actors, we're very we need attention we need recognition because it's a tough business and getting that mm -hmm. feedback really means a lot so thanks again to shock stock for the nomination and the award so 
And uh, yeah, I think, uh, a few other ones. Guru was another one that won uh, best short film at uh, uh, Canadian Cinematography Awards, which was really terrific. So. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I haven't seen the Paper Boy yet, but um, I've seen oh, the cover yeah. poster. Yeah, it, it's it's really great, <laughs> and um, I know Michael as well. Michael James Regan. We're going to get him in the green room really soon. But that's yeah. really great, again, that you can take these stories that inspire you or, or remind you and tell a story that others can relate to and get that. The word that you said that stands out the most to me is recognition, recognition mm -hmm. for your work, recognition for being relatable, recognition for telling a story that's going to cause change in people. And when I say cause change, I mean simply an emotion. They'll either laugh, they'll cry. It could be a call to action. It could be a memoir of sorts based on history or something, some of the source. But when you put something together and you create it, you're proud of it. And so the one of the best things, as you said, as creatives, you can give us is the recognition. So that's really, really good. That's really, really good. As a matter of fact, you mentioned Family Game Night. I have seen Family Game Night. Again, it has a nice twist to it. I can't reveal it. You have to follow Mark. Let's put it back up on the screen now. Follow Mark. You can DM him. Um, you know, Mark, you can e reach out to him on Instagram. Let's take a moment and look at this clip from Family Game Night. And then when we come back, I think we're going to stop and just play a quick little game. I know you're a thinker and you're an analyzer and I want to put you on the spot. No real surprises. Nothing is going to hurt. Okay. Your face, your face just went like, okay, game. Yeah, because I'm so analytical and when it comes to games, I'll, I'll come up with really long brainy answers. It's hard for me to come up with one word answers. I'm afraid my brain's going to explode. So we'll, we'll but anyway, uh, we, have, we, have, we, draw, we draw parallels, man. We definitely draw parallels. That's great. Let's take a look at, um, Family game night, and we'll be right back. 1986 will do that to you, considering there's poison in it. <laughs> Blood sacrifice to the one known as Beelzebub, aka Horned God Bal Hadad, or simply as Satan. <laughs> So, 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 how can how can people who are watching how can they view the paper boy? How can they view Family Game Night? And it may be very complicated. I don't know. Do is there a website, or can they just message you and get the info? Because I know some of what you've been a part of is um is paid media as well. So they either have to subscribe or purchase to view some of it. Yeah. So Family Game Night can be viewed on uh, Amazon Prime Video in Canada and basically anywhere in the world. So if you check that out on Amazon Prime, you can find that. You can also find a, a documentary film I made on Amazon Prime called uh, Soul Man, which is uh, about a professional wrestler who's a good friend of mine, who's also the uncle of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You might have heard of him. But uh, so there's, um, yeah, so there's family game night on Amazon Prime. The paper boy we're working on like distribution is happening because it's it's good. Okay. We just we're going to be working with a few partners coming up very soon. I just we want to make sure we take the right steps though. So right now it can't be viewed unless, you know, unless so you people, know. So people just movies. need to follow you and then when it becomes, you know, available, then you will let them know. That's what they need to do. You need to follow him on Instagram. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And we just, I think we're finished the the, the festival run now. We got two, we, we have so many awards that I actually had to build, I had to, I had to build an annex onto my house just to handle all the award trophies. So it's, <laughs> it's there it out. is. I get it. I get it. You had the right permits to build, I'm sure. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Absolutely. All, all, all the red tape and bribing officials, you know how it is. So. That sounds really good. So let's play, let's play a quick game. And this is just, um, this is just a quick game. It doesn't require a lot, just quick answers. It's just a simple game. I played this with um, one of our actors before. This is just called, would you, would you rather? You just choose one okay. or the other. And again, like I said, knowing the, um, the analytic person that you are, I love it. I just love it. Okay. Would you rather be too hot or too cold? Too hot. And I'm going to take it a little further. Why would you rather be too hot? I don't know. I I, I love, you know, this is not a very good answer as a Canadian, but I, I just, I just love warm weather. I like, yeah. you know, when it's sometimes when it's, when it's a really hot day and I get in my car and my car is really hot, I sometimes roll up the windows don't turn on the AC and drive around because it's like being in a sauna. That's it's it's actually kind of magical, and that that kind of makes me sound crazy, and I regret saying it. 
but I, yeah, I just, I love it hot. I love the, I love the heat. So. Uh, okay. Would you rather be stuck on an island alone or with someone who talks incessantly? With someone who talks incessantly. I thought I knew that answer. Yeah, definitely. Because you're, you're an engager. Although you're shy or introverted, or at some point you were, you're like me. You're, you're an engager, especially with someone you feel comfortable with. It's like, let's let's talk. Let's go at it. Would you rather work in a group or work alone? That's a good question. Very good question. I would have to say alone. That's how I tend to work. But there's there's times you need to be surrounded by great people. But I do a ton of work in solitary. But you can't do everything alone. You need you need a, you need a great team. But uh, yeah, so I'd have to say alone. Okay. Now I'm going to go a step further with that. Working alone. Do you trust your work at initial? Um, once you put it together, do you trust it immediately or do you stop and think and say, I don't really, which do you do more often, trust or not trust? I know I'm not talking about revision per se, but just once you put something together, are you more to trust it or not trust it? Now I've learned to trust it a lot. And that came from good, good feedback from some good mentors, you know? So it's, and it's like, cause we, we, we second guess our own work. And then people have, you know, people said, you know, this is really good on the first take. Like there, there's something here. And I've, so I've learned to trust there, there's just a value that, you know, com comes out of the process. And uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's, I, I, I do trust it now. And I think that's, 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 that's a place that all, all artists should strive for. It's, and it's, 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 it's attainable. I think it's attainable for I everyone. Agree. So. Would you rather explore space or the ocean? space okay would you rather deep sea diving go deep sea diving or bungee jump hmm. uh. neither for sure but i'll say bungee <laughs> jumping okay would you rather lose your keys or your cell phone keys okay cow tongue or octopus both sound delicious. I would eat both, but I'll say I'll say cow tongue because I haven't had that. I have had octopus though. I've had octopus. Okay, good, good, good. Would you rather have X-ray vision or magnified hearing? Well, <laughs> see, I'm going to say X-ray vision, but then people are going to think think ill of me, and I would use it only in an honorable manner with that ca caveat, but uh, <laughs> I already have sensitive hearing and I can hear someone chewing gum like two streets away and th the noise sort of bothers me. I'm a little, I get irritated by, by sound a little bit. So extra sensitive hearing, it would be, would be a big negative for me. So I'll go with the x-ray vision. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> for your birthday, would you rather receive cash or gifts? Cash. Mm -hmm. All right. Listen to music from the 70s or music from today. I think I know the answer to this. Oh, yeah. 70s. The greatest decade oh, yeah. of music ever. For absolutely, sure. Absolutely. And then finally, would you rather lose your vision or your hearing? There's that question again. I'd say I love hearing because I love music, but I would say I, I, I'd rather lose my hearing because uh, that's, that's there's just so many wonderful sights to see, you know? Yeah. That's very complicated. And of course, we don't wish that any of that on you. Absolutely. Just, a little, yeah. just right. a little just a little fun game to find out where Mark is and what he's doing. Let's pause and watch one more clip. I believe this clip is from now. Tell me about Green Kite. What is Green Kite? Is this the show? It's a it's it was a company that I started. Uh, right. Um you know, one of I'm very proud of this in my life. I I uh, was a self-taught web developer. Didn't go to school for it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I just dug in like a bulldog and taught myself to code, and uh, worked as a coder at a printing company. And then from there, I decided to leave there and start my own software business, um, with no computer science degree. And I ended up hiring you know, a number of people who had computer science degrees and wow. built my company up to, a, a, you know, at one point an eight to 10 staff company. 
Uh, we had eight very successful years and then one catastrophically unsuccessful year. And then I went out of business, but very proud of that. So um, Green Kite was, I just wanted to tell some office based stories, kind of based a little bit on my personnel. I was a little bit of a Michael Scott type character. I see a lot of like in, from the office, I see a lot of parallels with myself and Michael Scott because mm -hmm. I thought I was the hilarious boss. And then a lot of the times I was, I ended up just. I found out later that I, maybe I wasn't as hilarious as I thought I was. I just was, you know, overly boisterous and maybe I was annoying people. So I just, I wanted to sort of write stories and my company was called Green Kite. So I decided to write office-based comedy about a tech startup and uh, play uh, in, in, in these web vignettes, I played a bunch of different types of characters. So um, this, this was, this one is an overly boisterous salesman who doesn't know when to make a sale. Just all right. Let's take a look. All right, we'll be right back. Dude, I was exactly like you. You already said that, and I don't believe you. Look at me. I'm so important. Mr. Professional in his big old chair. I can't be around a smelly dog. I don't want a dog. You and me both. <laughs> Lots of good expression there. Good expression there, man. You should be really, you should really, really be proud of your work. And um, Thank you. I, I encourage you to keep writing, keep pushing, man. I know that there's a lot of greatness in you. Again, I'm looking forward to jumping on the writer's table with you, jumping on set. There's some things we're going to collab on. I'm actually very proud to say that we are both with the same agency. Shout out to hero artist Jessica Martins here in Toronto. Woo, woo, woo. Hello, Jessica. Yeah, Hero Artist Agency. Um, thank you for allowing us to be a part. Thank you for helping Absolutely. make our dreams come true and and lobbying for us. Um, I'm gonna have Jessica on at some point. I am. I've already That's spoken amazing. with her. She's gonna come on, but I can just say even now because you can relate to it. Um, Jessica has been there. Jessica, um, there's mm -hmm. Brianne, and then at one point there was Michael, and now there's Jessica Brown on the West Jessica End that Brown. we're working with now. So there are two Jessicas and a Brianne there. And um, and, I, and I have to say, you know. Uh, Jessica in particular, but she, she's not only really encouraged me as as an actor, but really encouraged me as a writer and, and helped me make many valuable connections mm -hmm. as a writer and as a producer and uh, really facilitated that. So, you know, like it's called Hero Artists for a reason. They really help artists grow. So I'm really grateful for that. Uh, Absolutely. For that opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna get her in later this year. Um, she's she's busy right now. Of course she's busy right now. Yeah. She's so just, we, want she, we want her to be busy. So yeah, she's <laughs> she's a grinder. She spends many, many nights, many nights um awake working for us and working to build her company and her brand, and we don't even know it. Some I've had a couple late night conversations with her about the business and the industry, you know. She's really she's really great. But Mark, I want to thank you for coming by the green room. Thank you for doing you, this, Mark. sharing. Um, I just want to encourage you again. Let me put it back up for those of you. Please follow Mark. Mark is doing something great. He's a wonderful person inside and out. He has a wealth of talent, a wealth of creativity, and a wealth of purpose. So, Mark, like I said before, again, thank you so much. Thank you for coming by the Green Room and being a part of what we're doing here. And I think that's about it. Is there any final thing you'd like to say to the audience, the people, those who are watching? Well, I would like to say, you know, to you, thank you so much for having me on. And I, I think what you're doing and, you know, I, I really appreciate your, you know, your hustle. I see a lot of myself in you. I think, you know, I think we can, we both connect on that level that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, uh, being an artist is, is a constant struggle, uh, a struggle that we love so much. We love the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs ups and the downs they feed into the artistry and make us better so uh, it's it's such a rich and wonderful experience and i know you get that and i wish you all the best on this show and just keep on keep on grinding as well thank you so much my brother all right thank you for coming into the green room we'll see you next time